Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released iOS 17 Public Beta 2 and iOS 17 Beta 4 re-release today. These are available to developers and public beta testers if you're signed up for their programs, available over the air in software updates. And so you can check that now. Now, depending on which version you're actually upgrading from, on the left here, I was running iOS 17 Developer Beta 3. It was 1.27 gigabytes to go to iOS 17 Public Beta 2. With iOS 17 Beta 4, it was 370 megabytes to go to beta 4 re-release. So not a huge update, but it is a different build number. Now, along with this, Apple also released a bunch of other different releases. So we have iPad OS 17 beta 4 re-release, as well as Mac OS 14 beta 4 re-release, and then also watch OS 10 public beta 2, tvOS 17 public beta 2, and HomePod OS 17 public beta 2, along with the public betas for iPad OS and Mac OS as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, and you can see the build number is 21A5291J. This is the exact same build number between public beta 2 and beta 4 re-release. Apple delayed public beta 2 and released this along with a new build with beta 4 re-release, most likely due to the Mac OS 14 beta 4 bug. It was causing a blank screen and devices sometimes wouldn't work properly at all. This has been resolved with the Mac OS beta 4 re-release according to Aaron P613. So that should be fixed this time and much better. As far as new features and changes, well, if you're on beta 4, you will not have a modem update going to beta 4 re-release. If you're on public beta 1, though, you will have a modem update going to beta 2. So it just depends on what version you're on. I've been seeing pretty good connectivity overall with beta 4 in general. So hopefully the modem update is much better for you if you're going to the public beta. Now, as far as new features, there's performance gains for sure. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but let me go over a few of the nice features with beta four, as this is a similar build to beta four with beta four re-release. So it's a little bit confusing here, but Apple did update it and it seems to perform better with a couple different things. Now, features wise, if we go into our settings, go over to general and then airdrop settings, we have a new setting for bringing devices together. We can turn that off if we want to turn off the new way to actually airdrop. With an accessibility under display and text size, we have a new option for prefer horizontal text, where it says prefer horizontal text in languages that support vertical text. So you can turn that on if you want to. Within our standby settings, we have an option to show preview on tap only. It says standby can hide the preview of a notification notification until you tap on it. Within our settings, there's a new home screen and app library icon that's been fully updated. And if we go into messages and tap the plus on the left, this has been redesigned with circular icons. The more button has been changed to circular and also photos no longer shows your latest photo. Instead, it's just the photo app icon. I think I like the other way better, but we could see this changed with the next beta. Within the health app, if we're logging an emotion or mood for our state of mind and we tap on next, the overall look of it has been updated. I showed this compared to the previous version in a different video. Within music, if we're playing a song and we want to airplay that song, it has a nice new animation to it. Also, if we go into the control center, there's a new icon for the remote for Apple TV. It's been updated with a new look. One other feature I didn't mention in previous videos is if you go into the app store, go to arcade, scroll down, you'll see that we have an option now for different categories. So we can select different categories of what we want to actually play as far as games under the arcade selection. So adventure, action and more. As far as additional features, you really won't notice any difference going from beta four to beta four re-release as on the back end code, it's pretty similar as well. However, if you're going from iOS 17 public beta one to iOS 17 public beta two, you'll notice all the features I already shared along with other things I've mentioned in different videos and other features within things like weather, where we have updates for the moon, we have updates for wind gusts and much more. So there's a lot to cover in these betas. And if we find more, of course, I'll have a separate video about that. As far as release notes, well, I did notice a slight difference where if we go into feedback and within the notes online, I noticed that there might be some more known issues that were mentioned here, but there's really no major updates here with known issues or resolved issues. There's over 70 categories of known issues, 16 categories of resolved issues with 40 resolved issues mentioned. Lots of things they've been fixing and still more to go.
As far as things that have been actually fixed that I've used in this beta so far, I noticed airdrop seems to perform much better in beta four re-release. So if I go into photos, maybe share this to a nearby device, maybe my iPad. So we'll just airdrop this to my iPad pro. It seems to be much faster this time around where it just sends, you'll give it just a second and it's sent. It's much, much faster than it used to be. So they may have fixed that going from beta four to beta four re-release. Also, the keyboard bug mostly seems to be fixed. If you're typing, it seems to pop up every time. Sometimes in beta four, it would go away, but most of the time that's fixed. The re-release could fix that even further. Also notifications still have that bug where you swipe down, go back in and they just sort of appear. So they're not working as you would expect. It definitely could use an improvement here, but we've talked about that many times before. As far as overall performance, well, I do think there's a performance bump based off benchmark scores I'll share in a moment, but as far as promotion and just going through and using this over the past hour or so, it seems to be better, but it will take time to notice that the heat of the phone feels about the same. It's quite warm right now, and it's in a 70 degree Fahrenheit environment. So it's processing something in the background. I'm not sure what it is. But in general, it should be better. We'll give it a few days to see if that settles down, but it does manage itself, but it does feel a little bit warmer than it did before. As far as battery life, again, with beta four, some people say it improved. I saw a slight improvement over beta three, but if we go to battery, a battery health and charging, I'm down to 90%. I've seen this decrease faster and faster with iOS 17 betas. But if we go to the last 10 days, You'll see yesterday I had three hours and one minute of screen active time, two hours and 42 minutes of screen idle time and used a hundred percent of my battery. That's pretty terrible battery life. And hopefully it improves. That's still about an hour better than I was getting before. So I may try and wipe the phone again. I've done that before, but I may try and wipe the phone again and see if it improves. But so far today I've had two hours and 31 minutes of screen active time and an hour and 55 minutes of screen idle time and used about 60% of my battery. So, so far today it's actually performed performing better. I'm on Wi-Fi most of the time, so there's really no reason it should be as poor as it is. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 public beta two or iOS 17 beta four re-release, if you're already on the betas, just update to whatever version you're on. If you're on the public beta, go to public beta two or beta four, go to beta four re-release. But if you haven't installed iOS 17 yet, I would probably hold off as battery isn't as good as iOS 16.6. And there are some bugs they still need to work out. So if you're very dependent on your main device, I'd probably wait for that. But either way, if you're already on iOS 17, definitely update as it will fix some issues. Typically, if you're on the developer beta. As far as iOS 17 beta fives release, well, I would expect that next week based on what we had last year and the year before with iOS 15 beta five and iOS 16 beta five, we had releases on the 8th of August and the 10th of August, depending on the year. So it looks pretty likely that we'll have the same thing this year with iOS 17 beta five. So that's typically what we'll see. We're also hearing Apple may be updating iOS 16 again to fix issues with screen time. According to the wall street journal, I talked about this in my weekly news video and people are having their settings reset with screen time. So this will be fixed. Apple's aware of it. Maybe iOS 16.6.1 or iOS 16.7, but we haven't seen either of those testing yet. So it may be a while as far as that goes, as far as overall benchmark results, we have a little bit better score this time around with beta four re-release on the right beta four on the left, where we have 2,621 for single core, 6,102 for multi-core. So a little bit better on both. And this is actually run on the same device. My 14 pro max, like I said, I just airdropped the results to the other one. As far as anything else, well, there's not a whole lot more in this update. I'm expecting more with beta five, but if you've found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.